Good morning. Welcome, Harvest House. Welcome, online community. So good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Would you stand with us? You know, what an opportunity to gather in the name of Jesus. There are places all around the world that don't have the freedom to do that. So into this atmosphere, can we just declare freedom with our mouth? Can we just say it? Ready? One, two, three. Freedom. That was pretty good. Let's just do it one more time. I just want to release. It says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, right? So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Awesome. So yeah, Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship you this morning. Yeah. With your mouth, let's just welcome the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we just welcome your presence. We love you. We just honor you. So come and hijack this meeting and do what you want to do. Bless it. In Jesus' name. Let's worship God.
sing your praise I'm gonna seek you for all of my days oh forever my lips will sing your praise oh I'm gonna seek you all of my days all of my days You are worth it all, Jesus. You are worth giving it all, God. That's why we're going to join in right now with all the angels, with all the saints gone before, surrounding the throne of God, lifting up the praise, singing worthy is the Lamb. Every day and every night, let the incense rise before the King of kings, before the Lord of lords. Let's sing it out to him, for he is worthy of all of our praise. Let us bless the Lord every day and night, never-ending praise. May our incense rise. Let us bless the Lord. Every day and night, never-ending praise. May our incense rise. Let us bless the Lord. Every day and night, never-ending praise. May our incense rise. is he who hides in him thank you father find me in the shadow of your wings god find me in the healing find me in the wholeness that you bring jesus find me god in the righteousness that you clothe me in we just let go 
of our heaviness this morning. We let go, God, of our failures, of our past mistakes. We let go of the lies and fears that try to hold us back from you. We put on, God, the ring and the robe that calls us sons and daughters, not because of what we did, because of what you did, Jesus. Just to be with you, what a gift you are, oh God, just to be with you, what a gift you are to me, I find joy again, I find hope again in you. Because we love you. We are here because we need you. You're the one who makes me whole. You're the one who calls me back home. You're the one who died for me. You're the one who sets me free. What a gift you are. of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. Yeah. For in my need, his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. It has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow.
Can you hear his voice? Come away with me. Can you hear his voice? Sing, come away with me. Come away with me. Come away with me. With every breath. to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home, and day by day I know he will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne, to this I hold my only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. And when the race is complete, still my lips shall just stay in an attitude of worship. Lord, we thank you this morning that our hope is in you. Hope for our families, hope for our nation, hope for our city, our hope. And hope is the confident expectation that good coming just get a picture of that you see good coming in the different situations that you're involved in right now the goodness of God coming can we just whisper the name of Jesus out into the atmosphere Jesus if you want to sing his name out Jesus let's just exalt his name in this room to say his name, Jesus, Jesus.
so much for the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. And this morning, Lord, we even pledge our allegiance to you, Jesus. We've been marked. You've been marked by Jesus as a son or a daughter of the Most High God. That's our truest identity is in Jesus. The presence of the Lord is so in this room right now. Just give him anything you need to give him. This would be a great time for you to just, I give you my fears. I give you my hopes, my dreams. I just give it all to you this morning, Lord. We just trust in your Lordship this morning. We trust you, Jesus. We're going to continue to worship the Lord through our time of giving. If you want, if you'd like to sit down real quietly, you can. But Father, we thank you for the privilege of honoring you with our finances, with honoring you with the first fruits that comes through our hands, Lord. Lord, we're so blessed. We're so fruitful, Lord, because of you. And as we're giving our offering to you this morning, Lord, we're praying as we've been praying for our city. We're praying for small businesses. We're praying for people's jobs. We're praying for promotions. We're asking God for debts to be paid off, for student loans to be gone. We're asking, Lord, for big things because nothing is impossible to them that believe. And so we place our trust in you and ask your blessing on every person in this room, every family, and we're asking your blessing on this offering. And through this offering, Lord, I pray that your kingdom would increase more and more and more. And the gospel will go into all the world. We thank you, God, that this is the year of the million soul harvest. There's a huge harvest coming, and we believe it. Bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. God, God bless our worship team. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a hand. And as far as giving, we're not going to take up an offering, but the baskets will be in the back. You can also give online, hhcboom.org, and you can also text any amount to 84321. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Harvest House. I'm not trying to pump you up. I mean, it's good to see you. That's what I mean. I mean, I love seeing a lot of people coming together in worship, especially all these students. I mean, I get pumped when I see students. I was in youth ministry, my wife and I, for almost 30 years, so I love young people. I still love young people. And I'm going to ask the young people in the room to stand up. I, I just feel like I've got a quick word for you. If you're here, you're a student, stand up real quick. Yes, this is a year. This is a year. Of promise. In Proverbs, the Lord said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Jeremiah 29 11, He has a plan for this semester, and you've got to embrace His plan. And as you embrace His plan, you are going to be full of hope. He is going to fill you with hope and a future because he's got you. He's got this semester, and he wants you to trust him with all of your heart. Don't lean on what you think, but trust in him because he's made a way. Like, it was not by accident that you're in this room this morning. It's not by accident that you're at App State. Like, he orchestrated and ordained this season of your life. So trust in him. Father, bless these students with power and love and a sound mind in Jesus' name. Can everybody say amen?
Amen. You can sit down. Did you feel like you were at, at the Methodist church for a minute, standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down? I remember being a kid at the Methodist church, standing up and down about a, ten times. So sorry I made you stand up and sit down so many times. But uh, I've got a few quick announcements. We really believe in prayer. So if you're a student here or a part of our family, we're praying every Tuesday morning. The men, 6.15, we give you a biscuit and some coffee. Yes, good stuff, Bojangles. And then 7 a.m. for the ladies, uh, that's every Wednesday. And then at noon, we're praying in this room. We social distance, we're spread out. But it's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at noon. And a big, huge announcement. Everybody in the room today at Valley Cruces Park at 5 p.m., we're inviting the whole church, all of you guys, to come out. There's diff- different shelters out there. We're going to have a, just a family day. Uh, bring a blanket, bring your own food, bring uh, your own drink, and just enjoy about three hours of being together as a family from five to eight. If you need directions or need any help with that, just please see us. Uh, in the first service, I'm going to ask uh, Chase and Samara and Noble to come up. In the first service, we did something Uh, as elders and as a leadership team at this church because we believe in sons and daughters and we believe that God is raising up sons and daughters and these guys here are sons and daughters and we commission them in the first service to be pastors. Uh, Chase and Samar, they're getting married. Woohoo! They're getting married in September and they are going to be pastoring the student ministry, the college ministry here at uh, Harvest House. And so we're commissioning them. We did earlier in the service. And Noble's going to be helping with life groups, uh, functional fitness, and all kinds of life groups and discipleship. And so I just want to bring them up because I want you to know we're empowering them today to do what they need to do. We're commissioning them to go and make disciples because... We've been walking with these guys, and we believe in you, and we love you. And so I'm going to turn it over to Chase for a, second, for a second, but I just want you to know why we're doing what we're doing. This is biblical, and the elders laid hands on them and commissioned them in the first service. And I want you to just receive them. And it's kind of like in the Old Testament, when a father released his son, or his, his sons, he would say, as if I said it, my son said it. So we're empowering these guys to do what Daryl and, and so many others have been doing for all these years on campus. But uh, I'm going to turn it over. We're, we love you guys and so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, real quick, Brett's going to put a QR code up on the screen. If you're a student, grab your phone right now and take a picture of that thing and fill out your information. Basically, what we're getting from you is all your information. I think it's your name, your email and a phone number because we want to reach out to you guys and get you plugged into life groups through the church. We feel like because of everything with COVID and can't meet in big, big numbers on campus, we really feel like God's telling us to meet in small groups and focus on discipleship. So put your information in there, and we will reach out to you guys uh, with some information about those groups. And real quick, I've, I felt I had a word for the students too. Uh, when Marshall said, let's just listen to what the Lord's saying, I felt like the Spirit of the Lord was saying, to all the students, you came up here for school, yes, but he really brought you up here to be with him and to know him more and to walk in the fullness of everything Jesus has for you guys. And so we're so excited. No matter what it looks like this semester, we're going to be doing discipleship and falling more in love with Jesus. And so we're really excited for you guys to join us. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. Good to see you. Welcome to our online community. We're so glad that you've joined us. And we're going to continue with part three of our Divine Health series. So I got a lot of information, so I got to dive right in. This is going to be fun today. So um, we, if you're joining us, you maybe hadn't been around, this is part three of our Divine Health series. And, you know, with COVID 19, our world, everybody knows it's turned upside down. So what we're doing is we're looking at just giving you practical ways to empower you in the area of health. And this scripture is our theme scripture. I think it's a really good scripture. 
It says, now may the God of peace, this is 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, may the God of peace make you holy in every way. Make your spirit, your soul, and your body. In other words, the spirit, we're going to talk about spiritual health today. Uh, your soul, we talked about mental health the last two weeks. I hope you were here. Really looked into cognitive behavioral therapy, all kinds of stuff to do to help you get through it. And then your body, after we talk about spiritual health, we'll be talking about physical health and stuff like supplements, stuff like the way you eat, working out. So we're going to dive right into that. So again, you heard me say today I want to talk about spiritual health. And I, I want to call this teaching today, I call it spiritual entanglement. And so uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a, a precursor here. I'm going to geek out on some science and some quantum physics. Any physics fans out there, physics majors, whatever, okay. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to geek on that. You know, Jesus talked a lot in parables, so he gave examples in the natural, and then he applied it to the spiritual. So that's what I'm going to do today. We'll give you an example in the natural of how science is really just, man, in so many ways, verifying all that we know in Scripture so let's just get started with this one uh, Genesis 2 verse 7 this is the very first book of the Bible and what happens is God makes humans he makes humans he says the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life we see two substances that God used he used the dust we could say the clay the breath the breath and the clay so you are made out of two substances. The dust represents the natural world, this world that we're in right now. But you also have a spiritual world. And he breathed in you the things of the spirit. Now, unfortunately, we've been conditioned to believe that the external world is all that is actually real. You know what you can see through your eyes and hear and through your ears and touch. You know, your five senses, that that determines reality but let me tell you there's much more going on you are a spiritual being that scripture right there just shows it to you that you are a spiritual being so it's super amazing man I, I love quantum physics and I'm not like super scientific at all I just geek out on it you know what I mean so I love quantum physics but in quantum physics we are seeing some amazing things happen it actually says through our, our understanding that it's the unseen world that determines what the seen world's going to be. So what is quantum physics? In case somebody doesn't know, quantum physics, basically it describes the properties of matter and energy at an atomic or subatomic level. This is like bio class for a little bit here. You know, it's the atom, it's the protons, neutrons, quarks, all those kind of things. That's, that's what we're talking about today. So that's what quantum physics says. And quantum physics says this, we've discovered that all matter, like... Let's just take this stand. It's full of atoms and, and, and those things I described, protons, neutrons, and all that. And this is what holds this thing together. So atoms is kind of what holds your body together and anything that you can see. We know atoms form molecules. Molecules, what do they do? Form po uh, particles. And it, again, it just holds all substances together. Now, it's amazing. These quantum properties, they don't actually really behave according to the traditional laws of physics. Quantum physics has shattered the way we looked at the universe. In order to understand the universe, we used to try to find out how big it is, like in the heavens, go up there and see what's there. Now, in under, to understand where we came from, origins of life, the universe, we're looking at how small it is, into that nano world, if you will, in such a way. So it's amazing that through quantum physics, we see that we, we understand that everything we see is made up of things we cannot see or cannot understand. This scripture just verifies, man. The Bible's been saying this all along. It's so cool. I'm going to really get excited. So here we go. Hebrews 11.3. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Awesome. The Bible's been saying this all along. Now, here's something I want you to understand about atoms. Atoms are super hyperspatial. What do I mean by that? It means there's a lot of distance between them. So if we were going to compare the ratio of atoms to real-world objects, 
Like we know there's trillions and God only knows how many atoms holding this stand up. But they're hyperspatial. In other words, if we were like, what is the size of an atom? Let's say it was the size of a football field. They would say the nucleus would be the size of an of orange. And then not only the electron cloud, y'all remember biology class, the, the electron cloud around a single atom would be the size of a small city like Boone. So what does that mean? It means there's a lot of space in all these atoms. Well, this is blowing our minds because how can something that holds substance together have a lot of space? What is holding the atoms in the right proximity? Like, why doesn't it just melt? I mean, if there's that much space, what is going on? So they begin to try to study what is holding atoms in their right proximity so the neutron and the proton just don't cave in if there's so much space and there's trillions of them in this. Guess what? They found out what it was. It's called electromagnetic material or matter or light. So guess what? There's light holding this thing together, keeping it from collapsing. I mean, your blood is nothing but coagulated light. Is that cool or what? And how is the light getting in there? How is light holding atoms together, which is holding this together? They don't know, but we do. All right, so let's look at it. Here we go. This next scripture right here. This is when God, first few scriptures in the Bible, the very first thing he said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Now, here's what's cool. This was day one of creation. Day four is when he created the sun. Okay, everybody, like, mind blowed, mind blowed. Okay, God spoke, let there be light, and with it created all that we see and all that we are. Now, I'm telling you, that's cool. Now, okay, y'all ready to go a little deeper? Y'all nod so I can go on. Okay, go a little bit deeper. Let me explain a very strange phenomena in quantum physics. It's called quantum entanglement. Anybody here ever heard of that? Raise your hand. A few people. Awesome. Man, we need to talk afterwards. Seriously. All right, so what is quantum entanglement? Well, if you take two atoms and you allow them to combine so that the particles begin to interact with one another, they strangely connect or entangle in a process called correlation. The internal parts of the atom begin to get interconnected in a way that science can't explain. It's possible to link two particles in a single, in, in two atoms, like a photon, that they become supernaturally entangled. Okay? Now, as a thought experiment, let's say you took one of those atoms and you put it in New York and you took another one of those atoms and you put it in London, if you change the spin of one particle, like let's say in London, the one in New York completely changes spin. And they've done this time and time and time again. They are interconnected or entangled in a way that we cannot understand. Okay, if this sounds mind-boggling and you're out there going, what? Good. Okay. So are, so are all scientists. Albert Einstein and a guy, uh, if you all remember, Nathan Rosen and Boris Polensky, he, they all called it spooky distance at, 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 at a distance. Spooky, spooky action at a distance. They couldn't understand. How can you change the spin of one particle in an atom and simultaneously it changes in this one over and over and over? It's like they're interconnected or entangled. What has this got to do with anything? Well, here's the point. For you to have spiritual health, you realize you're made of two substances, the natural substance and the spiritual substance. Are you more entangled with the things of this world or the things of God? That's going to determine your spiritual health. That's going to determine it. So I'm going to give you three ways to really have spiritual health and these are so important you guys make sure you get them if you're taking notes usually i have all the scriptures come up today i'm not because there's so many i'm just gonna have to fly all over the place so um here we go how to have spiritual health there's the quantum entanglement thing number one 
If you're going to have spiritual health, you got to be born of the Spirit. God's original intent when he said, let there be life, is that every single inch of creation would be entangled with his glory. But when we fell, and you can find this in Genesis 3, 17, sin entered the earth. And not only did mankind fall, humans fall, humans fell, but so did all of creation. All of creation fell with us. And ever since, creation has been decaying, okay? But to keep us from being trapped forever in sin's entanglement, God did something so amazing. He became entangled in our world. It says it like this in John 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling with us. In other words, Jesus being God, he's God, he came and took on, took on the nature of, of us, humans. He became a human. Why? To free us from sin's entanglement. Why? So that we could be restored from the from the fallen state. In John 3, he says it like this. I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of come, uh, the kingdom of God, unless he be born of water, talking about natural, and born of spirit, talking about spiritual. We all need desperately to be born of spirit so that you can be a whole human being. That's what we need. Okay, now when we give our lives to Jesus, something amazing happens. We become entangled with his death. We become entangled with his burial. And we become entangled with his resurrection. And he gave, he gave us this beautiful act of obedience in order to bring that into being. It is called water baptism. And what happens when you are water baptized Something amazing happens. I'm going to read it out of Romans 6, verse 3. It says, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? You were baptized into his death. Why? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death that in, order, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, you too may have a new life. Wow. You know what that means? That means his life is your life. That means his resurrection is your resurrection. Let's read on. For if we have been united with him in his death like this, we're certainly going to be united in his resurrection. We are entangled with Jesus. Anybody want to sign up for that? Me, I do. What does it mean? His death, your death. His life, your life. His victory over sin, our victory over sin. His victory over fear, our victory over fear. His victory over lust, our victory over lust. His victory over sickness, our victory over sickness. We are supernaturally, spiritually entangled. I love it. And people might say, well, Dale, how's that possible? I just gave you an example in the natural. All right, let's go to our next one. The next one, be filled in the spirit. So number one, if you want spiritual health, you got to be born of spirit. And we'll give you an opportunity to do that. And then you can be filled in the Holy Spirit. All right, so after we're born of the Spirit, something amazing happens. We become entangled with His Spirit so that the, His Spirit actually fills our spirit and we are born of Spirit. What that means is that you're no longer held in this dimension of sin. You are instantaneously entangled and made new in God. So when the Holy Spirit moves, you move. When you pray, the Spirit prays through you. When, when you get convicted, God never convicts you to put all that shame. By the way, we don't do that shame stuff around here, okay? This is no shame zone, okay? No shame zone. But when God convicts you, it's because the Spirit is inside you. Guys, listen to this scripture. Listen to this. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, Romans 8, 11, is living in you. Who is living in you. And it, what will happen? It says, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body. Now it goes even deeper. John 14, Jesus said this, 
I'm going to ask the Father to give you a counselor. He's the Holy Spirit. And the world cannot accept him. And you know the world doesn't accept him. You know why? Because it's like... It's not tangible, but we know from science that, there, that it's the unseen realm that communicates reality in the seen realm. Y'all remember that old movie, The Matrix? Okay, y'all see that movie? It's like The Matrix. What happens in the spirit determines what happens in this world. Y'all gonna think I'm crazy, but it's, it's just so awesome. I believe that the spiritual world is truer than this world. People go, well, I, there, you can't see. Like, if you go outside today, hopefully, man, it's been raining and some boom, isn't it? Oh, man, I'm just getting, are the animals going to start lining up two by two? If they are, we're in trouble, everybody. So, <laughs> But if you go outside and you look up, hopefully we've got that beautiful mountain sky, you know, that crisp, beautiful air, you'll see blue. And you go, hey, guess what? The sky's blue. No, it's not. Get you a prism and hold up, you'll see the full spectrum of light shining up on a wall. They say they, the, the, the sky is actually violet. It's just your eyes, the cones in your eyes, the retinas can't pick up the blue li uh, that light. Blue's the dominant light. So we have unseen determining what is seen. Now listen to this scripture. It says, Jesus in John chapter 14 he says, the world cannot accept him, but it neither sees him, doesn't see him, or knows him. Look at this. But you know him. How do we know him? Because he lives in you. And he'll be with you. On that day, you will realize that I, listen to this, I am in the Father. You are in me. I am in you. We're entangled. Y'all, I'm pretty excited about that. I want to start dancing, you know what I'm saying? I do. We're entangled in them. Let's go to our final one. Live according to the Spirit. So number one, be born of Spirit. Number two, be filled by Spirit. Number three, live by the Spirit. Okay, in Romans 8, verse 5 through 6, those who live according to the flesh or, or the natural world have their mind, we talked about that in the last two weeks, set, on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. Okay, so I got a question for you, especially in the midst of all this chaos and craziness with COVID and, oh man, the racism issues that are just real and we repent of all that and just pray to God, God, heal our land. But are your mind, is your mind set more on earthly things? more on spiritual things it's our choice okay especially with this thing about fear okay look y'all know look everybody's social distance in here we're, you know we gave a mask and took temps and everybody came in but and i and i say we want to be really wise to mitigate the spread I'm, I'm not one of these that say you know it's nothing okay obviously you can tell but we cannot allow fear to overwhelm us and right now there's a contagion of fear that is spreading. But the scripture says, perfect love casts out fear. And right now, I believe God's calling us to walk and live according to the Spirit. Hebrews 12.1, it says it like this. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. We need to be set free from this. We need to be set free from this. Now, part of living according to the Spirit is understanding your spiritual position. This is going to be like wild. Okay, hang with me. Your spiritual position. Listen to Ephesians 2.6. God raised us up with Christ and seated us in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? It means that though we're here in body, natural we're seated up there. What does that mean? It means that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you have access to release what's up there down here. You're a conduit of his power. Inside you, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is inside you. And you have access to the heavenly realms. This is why Jesus said, 
when you pray, here's what you want to do. Pray, may your kingdom come on the earth as it is in heaven. So though you go to class or though you go to work or though you're in your family or trying to teach your kids through homeschool, we're here, but we have access to there. We are portals of the presence of the living God. And if there's a bunch of evil in the world, and right now there is, the scripture says, do not be overcome by evil. But you overcome evil by doing good. So what that says to me is that evil is spreading throughout the entire world. We need some good release. So in your heart, you, you've got this ability to go on your campus, to go into your work, to go into your family, and release the spirit of the living God. Boy, I'm telling you, that is something to be super, super excited about. You have the keys of the kingdom to be able to unlock unlock these realities okay to unlock them so now the question is living according to the spirit how do we activate it like a cell phone you know cell phone is no good until it's activated so how do we activate the things of the spirit well what we believe in the scripture it teaches it all the time he teaches this that the things of the spirit are activated through your confession through things you speak especially and prayer. I believe there's a new anointing on us to talk about believers in Jesus to release prayer and in so doing release the kingdom of God. Release the kingdom of God. So what were we asking you to do? Jesus says it like this whatsoever things you ask for believe that you've received them and they'll be yours. So what are you asking for in prayer? What are you believing for in prayer? There's so much there. There's so much there. All right, the final thing I want to say, because we're out of time, because we have abbreviated service, um, is one of the things that God's calling us to do is to be entangled in community. And this is beautiful. Let me read John 17, verse 20. It's absolutely beautiful. My prayer is not for them alone. He's talking, he's praying for us. He's praying for all of us. That all of them may be one. Wow. Father, just now listen to this carefully. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Wow. That the world may believe that you have sent me. I love that. Entangled, just so close, so intimate with one another. God is wanting to call all of us to become entangled in community. Why? So that this world that so desperately needs some Jesus. Oh, you getting this? It's desperately needing some Jesus. Our connection, our entanglement lets them know Jesus is alive. Let's stand, everybody. Let's stand. Father, we love you. We praise you. And we give you glory. If there's anyone here today and you don't know what it means, like what is it, how do you become born of the Spirit? Well, what you do is super easy. You just ask God. You just pray. And when you do that, your spirit's going to be awakened. And he will come. And he actually lives with you. Is there anyone here today? I will not bring you to the front or embarrass you in any way. I just want you to, if you need to give your heart to Christ, or oh Lord, I need to come back to you. I need you desperately. Just would you raise your hand, anybody, just to God, if you need to come to him today, anyone at all, anyone at all today, I'll give you a chance. the very end of our service we're going to we're going to exit and if you raised your hand or you want to give your heart to Christ we're going to have people out in front praying for you and so underneath that uh, awning that you came in so just feel free to go there now Lord we say Father make us one make us with you Father entangle us with your Holy Spirit and I pray for all of us that we would have health in the spirit
Spirit, especially in the days that we live. Jesus, you're wonderful. We love you so much. Amen. Let's give him praise, y'all. Can we give him praise? Amen. Amen. You guys are awesome, so hey, don't forget tonight, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we'll be at Valley Cruces Park. It's a beautiful mountain park, and uh, you can get directions outside. Also, we're not going to have any food because of COVID, so bring your own food and drink. It's a beautiful place, and uh, listen, make it a great day, okay? So at this time, if you guys would exit from starting in the back and, uh, and just maintain social distance as best we can... God bless you guys. Make it a great day, okay? Make it a great day.